bits and bobs and surprises. Welcome back everybody. Cousin It will not be joining us today. I think that he's a little bit worried about the current trend of what is going on. Look. This is my Paphiopedalum Red Shift. The one I showed so happily at one point because it was growing a new leaf and hadn't done anything for a long time in the crown. Well, it's gone. Tilt. Look at that. No dragon's blood could save it. So I thought I'm going to start this episode off with taking it out of its pot and having a look at the whole plant. What a shame. What a shame. The roots, this one would be compromised. This one's great. This one's great. This one is great, great, great. I have one, two dead ones. But look at that. It's gone. Ah. Yeah, so that's why Cousin It said, I'm out of here. <laughs> He's having none of it. Sorry about that. Question now is, what happened? It came from the bottom up. I would suspect drip off from another orchid into the crown from when I'm spraying. It is not in the line of fire of the sprayer. So it wasn't directly from the top. I can't determine what it was. It is not something that originated to my understanding from the top of the crown. It started down here at the base. So the answer to that question is I have no idea. I have no idea. It's a shame though. So I'm going to clean up my hands. Let's have a look what else is going on. It's been a long time since we saw the orange nuggets last. I did a whole copper with fungus and cetera treatment on them. Just because, why not? Give it a go. Now you can see that the previous new growth that bloomed so beautifully actually, you know, also got the marks and the spots and all that which was disappointing. I didn't think it would spread, but in that last video, I saw all the hallmarks of what was going on before. I cannot say that the problem is solved. Even after that treatment, it's been like three months now, maybe, yeah, three months. But it's not as, one is not as brown as the other. You can see here, the second one has the similar symptoms and all those spottings in the back. So it's not like that little treatment helped at all. I didn't honestly think it would because if this is a virus, then nothing will help it except to get rid of them. But the growths are coming on quite nicely. I broke a growth on this one during that process. Unfortunately, it had three growths coming I, and now it's only got two. It's growing great roots. So far, the new growths are clean. And I've got a sheath over here, and I have another sheath in here already. So it's not like they're not growing well. Um, if I'm going to let them flower this time, I'm gonna see if the flowers have been affected. The last flowers that we saw were absolutely perfect and pristine. But I just wanted to bring my golden nuggets out and show you that here you can see some residue of the 
treatment. Just to show you that, you know, the leaves are looking nasty, but not as bad on this one as they are on this one. Ring spot virus, it's possible. Two new healthy growths for now. Let's see what they do. Just wanted to bring that up. Not a good start to this bits and bobs and surprises, hey? <laughs> I'm gonna go and wash my hands again because I have to touch other orchids. <laughs> He's all suspicious. He's like, nope, I'm staying where I am. This is not happening. Don't look at me. You might also do some damage to me. <laughs> all right. Let's go to half and half. Let's move the curve in a different direction. Half and half. Here is my pastoral innocence. I had to repot it earlier this year. Not its good timing, so I didn't do too much to the root ball, but it was crawling out of its pot. And um, yeah, so I just bumped it up, lecker and all, and I didn't disturb the root system. But it's growing a gorgeous new growth right here. This was previous year's growth and no blooms as you can see. So contrary to what I thought that it would grow a new growth from here, it went to the next bulb and now I have a sheath in my pastoral innocence. The question is, will it bloom? We only have to wait and find out. But at least we're getting now to the point where it is producing a sheath. So that is good news. And a couple of weeks ago, I thought, why are you, how are you, how do you grow? Let's just say, because this one's maturing and developing. And then this eye down here started to move. And then it just turned black. So that to me is not enough calcium. And I may need to rethink my standard 300 PPM. I might need to get another bucket. And for some orchids, bump it up to 400 ppm. That is my thought process right now because this one gets 300 ppm. That is MSU fertilizer, including calcium nitrate. 200 MSU, 100 calcium nitrate. I would have thought that was a plenty. However, I believe this here, it just went all woody and stopped growing. Now I'm not going to just pick it off I'm tempted. I want to see if it's just woody woody or, but this to me looks like there's nothing else going to come of it. And it had started to swell and move and wanted to grow. So I'm contemplating very strongly a second fertilizer bucket with 400 ppm in it for those that need it. Because as much as I am quite lenient on my orchids, I can only do so much. If I can do something about these ongoings then I certainly will to avoid it happening and I'm gonna have to make a second list then of orchids that I have to address with 400 ppm otherwise I'm not going to be able to keep track I didn't want to get to this point in my collection but if needs must then that's what we will do and it has started today she got 400 ppm because I do not want that that sheath, if it has a, an option to bloom, I don't want it to not bloom simply because it can't sustain blooms. Pastoral innocence is definitely showing me a learning curve here. I'm not sure I've ever really shown this one. There was nothing really to show. This is my no ID zygopetalum, bought 2018. The typical ones that you get, well, in our case, in the garden center. And it was in bloom and everything was lovely jubbly. And then I did all the cleaning and the processing and, you know, putting it up into lecker. And it just went promptly sulked, as they do, obviously. So none of the new growths that I have grown since, which is this one. And then it grew this one. And now it's working on this one ever amounted to its previous size and now it's starting a new one so it has not re-bloomed for me since i bought it 
but I am definitely surprised, let's just say. It hasn't gone elsewhere, it's still with me. And it's bringing out super clean leaves. And on top of that, now it's completely and fully established in semi-hydro. And whether it's gonna bloom for me or not, I don't know. I have some sphagnum moss here to protect the roots. I may need to bump it up into a bigger pot to accommodate what's coming. And that should be an interesting video because I haven't seen what's in the pot, well, since 2018. Let's see, March 2018. So that should be interesting. I'm gonna, I'm going to film that. And I have to say that the zygos need a lot, a lot of light. Okay, let's not burn the leaves, but this one is on the top shelf in my prime real estate. It doesn't get all day direct sun, but it gets late afternoon sun, like now, shining on it. And I feel not only are they thirsty, like it drinks like, I don't know, a fish. And the Zygonesia I have as well, same thing. They are very, very thirsty plants. So this is my Zygopedalum. And I went to flush it today because I needed to fill the reservoir and I thought, I thought, well, hello, let's take you down and let's show everybody. A lot of light and a lot, a lot of water. <laughs> if I were to ever take seven orchids and name them after the seven dwarfs in Sleeping Beauty, my Cattleya Iricolor would be dopey. Seriously. But I thought I would bring her out and show you how this new growth is now at least showing signs that it is a little bit larger than the previous growth. Yay! This is a slow one. Oh my goodness, it is slow. Painfully so. But I can say that at least it is doing something and I am glad it's not going downhill as some of my candidates as we saw earlier. So no complaints. I definitely, definitely sterilized my hands before touching anything else. I don't need this one to go down. It is so slow that I am actually glad I'm still around to see it. So this was last year's growth, which is a nice little jump from the previous ones as I got it. You know, skinny little twerpy bulbs there. This one is more substantial and has a nice little almond shape to it. And then eight months ago, this started to show that it was on the move. Eight months. <laughs> yeah, it clearly responds to the hot temperatures. So I just have it by my prime real estate on the bottom shelf. It gets some light afternoon sun now. June and some of July, it's in full shade, but bright light. But now with the temperatures really heating up, uh, it is looking like it's, you know, growing a little faster, let's just say. But the bulb will be a smidgen bigger. So there's that. Just wanted to show that. Really, really happy about this one. I'm glad it's not stalling, that's all I can say. And here I have Lelia Crispa. I just keep showing this because Margaret from Emmy's Orchids wanted to see it, so every once in a while I just film it. And uh, I can't see any roots in the sides of the pot. What you see there is seashells. i got some algae building up, I'm not concerned about that. But I do like what I'm seeing here. Even though they're not in the pot, they're wrapping, there's root growth. And if that is what is happening on the outside, then I am confident something else is going on on the inside. I remember I had one root going down and one was sort of sticking out sideways. The sideways ones has, has since died off. But I believe that if this is happening, I've got two roots clambering out over each other, then the one in the media is doing well as well. The new growth looks like it hasn't done anything at all, but it has. 
a very, very slight increase in its growth. I'm hoping now with the next six weeks of top heat that it will actually take off and we can see a little bit more subs substance developing. But yeah, Lelia Crispa, let me know, Margaret, if you have seen the updates so far. This would be the third. This is my Nani Puakea Dogashima. Um, if you remember, if you haven't seen, but I moved this one. It used to live at my prime real estate where I thought it was getting quite enough light and it's never bloomed for me, but you can see it's growing like a weed. I mean, it, it's, I love the growth and there's new growth coming out at the bottom here, even now. It's just growing, growing, growing. Look at how the leka is all bulky. It's happy as a clam, but it never bloomed. So I moved her to here where in the morning, this corner is not shaded. The nobly and now the Nani Buakea Dogashima, they are not shaded in the corner despite the curtain being down. But either I can redeem myself as a grower or it's pure coincidence. This here looks like a sheath to me now. Right there. I, I would like to believe I knew what I was doing by putting it in more light, but I, you know, I thought I was, I knew what I was doing with my Paphio Pedalum Red Shift and, and all that, following the rules. But from what I can see, at this point, there's another one. It's, it's itty bitty. It's not even, well, maybe you can see it. But, hey, if by moving it here to the much more high light and direct exposed sun, trick, triggered it to start producing a sheath one, that's fantastic. I feel a little bit redeemed. I would like to also be open enough to say it's possibly coincidence. But I've had this orchid now for two years and not a single bloom and the size of it. Okay, it's from Schwerter, so maybe there's that. I don't know, but I would like to believe I knew a little bit of what needed to be done in order to trigger some blooms. And I'm actually hoping, not counting my sheaths before they bud, I'm hoping that that is actually going to bloom. However, I've never seen this before, so I feel like I'm a step, a little step further ahead than I was before. And let's just pan across here, here, here. Look, here's another example. I moved these two Vandacious uh, orchids here. This is my Vanda Crisnetia green light. Never bloomed for me, but it is a really, really good grower jumped into the leka with self-watering, no questions asked, roots diving in, and growing fans beautifully. I've got lots of little fans coming out that are were very, very welcome, but it's never bloomed for me. So I moved it from my little shadier location here to the corner of my east-facing side, so that in afternoon, while the back here now has shade, this corner still has some sun, but it's not as intense as where the Nani Puakea here on the right is located. So it's a little bit more shielded, but it will get some direct sunlight for at least an hour, if not an hour and a half, depending on the breeze. Well, its compadre back here is supposedly Vanda Darinara Blue. And we will find out whether it is actually a Darinara Blue, because look, here is a spike. Um, two coincidences just by moving them into more light or th two out of three are blooming because it's a coincidence or maybe I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'd like to believe that sometimes I know what I'm doing, <laughs> but that's a good thing. I'm just going to pretend I never saw it and do my thing, but a little bit of a update shot glass. Um, unfortunately, I'm not getting that result the root tip has died off but considering that the wind and stuff that we've had i'm not surprised but it's okay it's okay it's got roots in the pot i'm not concerned and i'm going to leave you with a stonker look at those buds this is my catlia zagarik wax african beauty oh my goodness these buds are just like 
Are you kidding me? They look like beans or something, you know. They're huge. They don't even look like a coffee bean, otherwise I would be really close. But look at the size of this spike. It's so thick and rigid. I love it. I love it. I love it. Just this sight. Yeah. I still don't like the demise of my red shift, but this just gives me goosebumps in the heat of the summer afternoon. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If I have not shown an orchid from previous videos for a while now, please let me know. If you want to see it in the next little bit of surprises, just as an update, random, let me know and I will include it. In the meantime, I wish you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.